In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the really important pieces of an Oracle database, and that's called a synonym. Synonym. And a synonym has two basic functions. Number one, makes it easier to reference an object. Easier to reference an object. Now what does that mean? Well, let's say you have an object in your database that has a really long name. Um, could be a table, could be a view. If I create a synonym, it makes it a heck of a lot easier for me to reference a really short name synonym um, than to type out the whole table name or view name or whatever it is I'm talking about. Could be a long schema and could be a long table name. Could be a lot of typing that I have to do. So a synonym could definitely make it easier for you to reference a particular object. The second thing and the most important thing is it makes it easier to move objects around and rename objects. So let's say I have this table. Let's say I have this customer's table. And it's owned by the HR schema. And for whatever reason, this table is going to get renamed and it's going to be moved to a different schema completely. Oops, let me shut off my little alarm there. We're going to rename this table and we're going to move it to a different schema. So what are we going to move this to? We're going to move this to... Uh, let's see, instead of HR customers, we're going to move it to uh, accounts receivable cost. Any program that we've used that references this particular table is going to have to be updated. It's going to have to be modified to say, okay, every place where it was HR customers, it's now going to be AR cost. And with modern tools, it's relatively easy to do, to go through forms and reports and whatever it is you're looking at and just you know do a global replace and change uh, to this new thing. But it's still a pain in the neck to do. And there are maybe some circumstances where the program that you're using that references this particular table, you don't have access to the source code. Maybe it's a third-party application that you purchased somewhere and you know it's kind of hard-coded in the form or it's hard-coded in the report to go to HR customers and now you have to go to this new place. What do you do? Well, a synonym makes it real easy to do that. You can create a synonym that basically points the reference to this over to this. So it gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of you know making changes on your system and uh, being able to go out there and uh, have a lot of flexibility as your system grows over time. So those are two basic purposes of what a synonym does. There's different kinds of synonyms also. There's public and private. Private is just going to be for the user that created it. And a public synonym is going to be available to anybody on the system. So we're going to take a look at creating a synonym, and it's real simple to do. We're going to take a look in SQL Developer. So. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm a big believer in SQL Developer. We're going to go out there and we're going to create a synonym. So let's say this HR job history table. We don't feel like typing that out all the time, so we're going to create a synonym. I'm going to make it a public synonym so that everybody can see it, so that anytime they reference something really short and easy to remember, like X, it'll point automatically to HR.JobHistory. So how do we do it? We go ahead and we say create public Synonym. And I'm going to call it something real simple. X for HR dot job history. Execute that command. And now there's this public synonym X out there. So now I can go in and I'm going to hop into SQL Plus here. Doesn't matter who I log in as. I can log in as, let's say, connect. Uh, order entry, order entry at sandbox. And if I do a describe on X, Oracle goes out there, it sees the synonym X, and it knows that it points to hr.jobhistory. And that's all my information there. So if I select star from X, you can see I get all the job history information, employee ID, job ID. I didn't have to specify hr.jobhistory. Oracle saw the synonym there 
resolved it for me, got the information. Now, of course, I have to have select privileges for the OE user to go ahead and do that. But as long as I have that in my database, I can go out there and select information. What happens if there's a conflict? What if I create a synonym that exists and there's a table or some other object out there where that name exists already? What's going to happen? How's Oracle going to resolve that? Let's take a look at the OE schema. OE schema has these tables. And I'm going to pick on the orders table. So let's say, I would never do this in real life, but let's say I create a synonym called orders for hr.jobs. Doesn't make any sense for me to do this really, but I'm just doing it as an example. So let's go out there. I'm going to create this public synonym. So now there's this public synonym called orders. So now let's hop on here and connect as hr to my sandbox instance. And if I do a select star from orders, you can see I'm really getting job information. This is the job ID, the job title, because we saw that the, uh, the synonym, Oracle resolved the synonym and figured out what orders was, figured out that it really points to jobs and brought me back the jobs information. But what happens now if I log in as the OE user? The OE user has an object called orders. What's going to happen? So now let's connect OE, OE at sandbox. And I do the same command, select star from orders. Remember, I got job ID, job title, min salary, max salary, because that's really my jobs table. Ah, I get something completely different, right? I get the actual order information here under OE. So there's a hierarchy that Oracle goes through when it resolves uh, the pieces of information. So the hierarchy, I'm going to try to draw this up here, to resolve a synonym. Is that Oracle does what first? It looks for a local object. So it finds a local object that's owned by the user who's executing the command. If it finds that, that's where it's going to pull the information from. That's what it's going to use. If it doesn't find a local object, the next thing it looks at is a public synonym. It, if it can find a public synonym with that name, then it'll pull the information from there. And finally, it'll go to a private synonym, which is just local to the user who's executing the command. So when I did this as the OE user, first thing it did was that it tried to look for a local object. Does OE own anything called orders? And in fact, that it does. That's why it pulled information from the orders table. But for all other users, let's connect as another user, ix slash ix at sandbox. So I connect as another user and I do the same command, select star from orders, you can see that it resolved the synonym. It wasn't able to find anything at the local object level. IX doesn't own a, an object called orders. So then it started to look at public synonyms. And it did find a public synonym for orders, which points to HR jobs. I was able to pull the information back there. Dropping a synonym is real easy, uh, depending on who I'm logged in as. Let me connect as the HR user. Well, actually, I created this as the, uh, the sys user, now that I think about it. So I'm going to have to connect as a sysdba. I can say drop public synonym orders. So now the synonym is dropped. If I go back in, I go in as IX, IX, and I try to select star from orders. Can't find it because there's no local objects called orders. There's no public synonyms called orders. There's no private synonyms called orders. So synonyms, real nice way, makes it easier to refer to an object, especially if it's a long object name that you want to shorten down. And it makes it a lot easier for developers to rename objects inside your database without breaking any of the programs that interface with it.